ask yourself, why did God create you? Have you ever sat down to ask, why did God create you? Because God does not do anything without a purpose. Why did God create me? Why did he put me on the earth? Why did I come as lion? Oh, you good. Why did God create you? Revelation 4.11. This morning we're looking at commanding dominion. Commanding what? And the subtopic is service. Commanding dominion. Then subtopic is what? Service. We are in a season of awakening. Nominal Christians will lose out of it. Refuse to be lukewarm as a child of God. It is those whose hearts pant after God that will make a mark on the earth. In Matthew chapter 6 and 31 to 33, it says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father, knowing that you have needs of these things. God said that He knows you need these things. Don't pretend you don't need them. You need good houses. You need good cars. He said He knows you need them. But shall we read 33 together? Want to go? But seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all the things in verse 32 shall be added. Unto you, shout hallelujah. When God and his kingdom becomes the controller of your thoughts, your words, your actions, then you are set to be a high flyer in life. When what you are thinking is his kingdom, what you are saying is his kingdom, and what controls your actions is his kingdom, you can't be a failure in life. It's impossible. Don't be in the midst of where things are happening and then you are not a partaker. So I'll be a partaker. Say it one more time. Change your perspective to put God first. The reason you escape from sin is to escape into service. If you don't know the purpose of a thing, my smuro said abuse is inevitable. The reason you escaped from sin and hell is so that you can serve God. Hebrews 9, 14. Shall we read responsibly together? Want to go? How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works? So do what? You are saved primarily to serve. He said, the reason why I saved you is not to first get husband. The reason why I saved you is not first to get a good job. The reason why I saved you is not first to get admission to school. The reason why I saved you first and primarily is to serve me. If that is not known, if that is not the foundation of your Christianity, you will not last. Many have come to church, if God can give me husband, I will serve him. No. The foundation is to serve him then those things shall be added unto you. So here, if this is not known, you won't last. I was addressing foundation class after five nights of glory, and I just told them, Matthew 6 and 3, as I came out, one of them ran after me, he said, sir, what I really need now, you know, if I can get a job. I said, you didn't hear what I said. You know, you can be in church and not be in touch. If the reason why you are serving God is not that, I tell you, you can't last in this kingdom. Because the day you get it, you will backslide. First and foremost, you are saved primarily to serve God. Then those things shall be added unto you. It's like buying a phone 
and then accessories are added unto you. So go for the phone. Forget the charger. It's an accessory. Walk is charger. Husband is charger. Wife is charger. You don't pray for them. Just buy the phone. Seek ye first. And then all these things shall be added unto you. Shout hallelujah. So I'm saved to serve. I'm saved to serve. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, where God talked about dominion, in verse 26 to 28, he said, let us make men in our own what? Image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over all creatures. And in verse 27, he said, so God created man his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, rebuild the earth and what? Subdue it and have what? dominion over everything. As long as Adam was at the center of God's will, he had dominion over all that God created. Is that true? Including the devil. He had dominion over the devil. The devil was not Adam's problem. It was when he lost it that the devil had power over him. Now let me say this to you. Forty years of mere Christianity, religiosity, normal Christianity, cannot match six months of active Christianity. I repeat. Forty years of nominal Christianity, mere Christianity, where you are not committed, but you have been in church for 40 years, you can't match a person with six months active in Christianity. He will beat you. Did you get what I'm saying? Yes, you have been going to a church for 50 years, 60 years, 40 years, but you are not actively involved. The person who comes to Christ in six months will beat you in every area. The speed the person will get, you'll be shocked. Some of you have been born again for so many years, but you are not active. You are neither here nor there. You are the most dangerous place to stand at the center of the road. You are not for the devil. You are not for Christ. Church, you are not serious. The devil, you are nowhere. So tell me where you belong. So I hear. We must return, so I must return to serving God as to restore my dignity. Say it one more time. You know what God said in Malachi 3, 7? Return unto me. So it's not God who will follow you for you who confess. He said, listen, <laughs> Return unto me. And what? And I will return unto you. Say and what? He said you to return first. You, 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 you. Go to God first. Don't say, oh God. Oh God. God said you return. Until you return, you cannot be restored. Now, ask yourself, why did God create you? Have you ever sat down to ask, why did God create Create me because God does not do anything without a purpose. Why did God create me? Why did He put me on the earth? Why did I come as a lion or a goat? Why must I come out as a human being? Why did I come out as a four footed beast? Why must God make me who I am? And you should ask questions. You ask what? And every question has an answer in the Bible. Why did God create you? He just, he just created you for you to buy cars. If it's that all, then go to a car shop. The, the, what did God create? He created you just to wear clothes, then go to fashion parade. Why did God create you? Revelation 4.11. So you know why God created you. Shall we together? One to go. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and what? And power. For thou hast created what? Including man. What did he create you for? And for thy pleasure. So we are created primarily to give God pleasure. To give him what? That's the reason why he created us. Stay tuned. David Abume will be right back. In the hustle and bustle of life, it's easy 
to neglect your spiritual well-being. But what if you could find a way of connecting with God each morning, even in the midst of your busy schedule? Join the online morning devotion, your daily 30-minute sanctuary of peace and reflection every Monday to Saturday at 7 a.m. for a soul-nourishing experience that will set the tone for your entire day. Since 2020, I've had an overactive hormonal imbalance. I've not been able to see my period monthly without taking hormonal drugs. So I placed my hand on my tummy during the personal prayers and I prayed. And to my amazement and to the glory of God, my period came out for the first time since 2020. I'm just here to give all the glory. During the morning devotion on May 18th, Papa declared that we shall be fed financially as we step out. And that very same day when I stepped out, I was fed financially from someone I didn't even expect and I was able to ratify a financial issue I had at hand. And brought to the morning devotion too, my team and I were expecting God for a promotion and God granted us a promotion on 24th of May and I'm here to return on board. You can send testimonies, including pictures, short videos, name and location to WhatsApp on plus 234-904-919-3971 or plus 234-818-472-2826 or you can send via email omd at smhos.org visit our website at smhos.org forward slash live streaming and our social media platforms to be a part of this transformation journey don't let your busy schedule keep you from starting your day with God. Join now. They worship together regularly at the temple each day. Met in small groups in homes for communion and shared meals with great joy and thankfulness. Acts 2, 4-6 In your daily pursuit of a fulfilling life, you need the support of a spiritual family. A heaven where you can enjoy spiritual comforts. A brook where you can be refreshed with God's word. And a military backup for fellow soldiers in Christ. Enjoy these and much more in the Cell Fellowship, designed as a close-knit setting for your personal revival, growth, and blessings. It exists in three structures, the Home Cell Fellowship, which is suited for everyone, the Corporate Cell Fellowship, which is convenient for corporate offices and organizations, and the Unique Cell Fellowship, which is made for students. No matter your preference, there is a place for you. Locate the nearest Cell Fellowship Center to you and begin reaping the benefits today. Welcome to Our Salvation with David Ibiomi. The reason God created you and I is not because we should buy cars. It's because we should give him pleasure. So here. It is when you give God pleasure, he takes away pleasures of your life. One way to give God pleasure is to serve him. So it's to serve him. One way to give God pleasure is to do what? Is to serve God. So here. If you are not serving him, you are not giving God pleasure. It's not to sit down in church and copy note. It's to serve him. So here. If I tell something, it's not for you to look for miracles. It's to serve him. This morning, I'm looking at three areas to serve God faithfully. Many think they are serving God. It's the God who is serving them. <laughs> Let me say this to you. Coming to church is not serving God. It's God servicing you. Who is blessing you now? When you have a car and you take the car to a mechanic. What do you say? Servicing. Why? You are spending money. True? You, are, you say, I'm taking my car for what? Why do you say service? You spend money. True? When the car you begin to use, you say, this car is serving me well. Do you understand how it is? Now, when you come to church, God is servicing you because he's the one blessing you. You are not doing anything for him. And it's when you do the three things I'm going to say, you are serving God. Many of you are not serving God. It is God serving you now. <laughs> when you take your car, if the car is, do you say, this car is serving me well? When you take the mechanic, why did you say, this car is serving me? You say, I'm servicing this car because you are spending money. Now, God is spending on you. You came to church now. God bless you. God did you this. What are you doing for God here now? Tell, okay, tell me. Sit it on the chair. Are you doing anything for God? 
Except like ushers and choir. You, you sitting down, what are you doing? God is servicing you. True? <laughs> so here. And there's no retirement in service. No matter your age. Three areas to serve God faithfully. First Corinthians 4 2. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 2. Shall we read together? The word steward means servant. Is that true? Shall we read together? Moreover, it is required in stewards, that means those who are serving, it, that a man be found what? Faithful. So, three areas to serve God faithfully. Because the judge of service, serving God what? A steward is one committed to serve the interest of his master. Now, Jesus speaking in Luke 22, 27. In Luke 22, 27. Shall we read together? For whether is greater, he that seated at meat, holy, that's what I'm trying to He that seated, like the way you're sitting, who is greater? You that sitting down, doing nothing in church. Or he that what? God, just, you are just speaking, no, this is not Luke. He said, which one is greater? The man who just sitting down in church, doing nothing, and the one who is serving. It's not he that seated at meat, but he that among you that what? He said, the one greater is not the man sitting down in church. It's the one who is serving. Sir, here. Do you hear from the mouth of Jesus himself? He said, the man sitting down in church is not serving me. He's not great anywhere. It's nothing to write home about. The one who is great at my side is the man who is serving. Now, there are three areas of service. Three areas of what? Number one area is physical service. Physical what? Physical service is using your divine endowment. Such as your skill, your talent, your energy, your wisdom, etc. to serve God. Is that true? It is making useful contribution for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Now, this kind of physical service is when we talk about the ushering, choir, sanctuary keeper, decoration. You know them? All these people are doing things. That's physical what? Service. That's physical service. Now, do you know how powerful physical service is? <laughs> when you give him your time in physical service, he gives you his life. When you give him your strength, he gives you his health. When you give him your brain, he gives you his wisdom. When you give him your voice, he makes you a voice on the earth. That's a physical service. When you inquire and you're singing to serve, you one will hear your voice. When you begin to use your brain to do things in church, he will be very wise. When you begin to use your physical strength to do things, he will not allow you to break down. That's how God does. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's how people say, I went out for evangelism and sickness left. May the Lord give you understanding. The apostles in Acts chapter 6, 2 and 3, they said, Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is no reason that we should leave the word of God and serve what? And verse 3 together, shall we do together? Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among the seven men of honest report, full of Holy Ghost and wisdom, that we may appoint over this word. They see physical service as what? Business. As what? Business. Table service is business. Is what? Business. Table service is what? Business. So you must give it a business approach. You must do it faithfully. Now, let me tell you something. That's in Romans chapter 12, verse 11. It's not slothful in business, it's fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So you must not come to choir like a joke. Like what? You won't come to usher like a, a You must take it serious. You don't become a sanctuary keeper. You do it like a, a joke. You get serious. Get what? Serious. Now, many people don't know something about King David. King David was the wealthiest man in his time. He was the most influential man in his time. Everything about King David was exceptional. It was what? But there's something people don't know. 
King David was a king in the palace and usher in church. He said, I better be a doorkeeper in the house of what? My God. So, with all his influence, he was a doorkeeper. He was a what? So, he was an usher where? In church, a king in the palace. Now, these days, small, small things. They, when they give people small appointments, <laughs> eh, he said, no. That I learned some people don't even come for prayers. For what kind of prayers are That they make you a commissioner, national movement commissioner, before they decommission you. Savuelo, you come because you are empty of the bank and I say, where's my seat? Where's my seat? They said, this, they said, seat for what? They said, where you kept me? Do you know where I am? National commissioner without donation. <laughs> David was what? Was a doorkeeper in the house. A king in the palace. May the Lord give you understanding. He said, for a day in the course is better than a thousand. I, I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. That means I better be an usher than to go to drinking bar to be drinking. That's what he said. That's a king. That's who? Who had all it takes. So here. Physical service has its own point, but this spiritual service has the highest point in service. In this kind of service, you make sure every time you pray on your altar, you put his kingdom first in your prayers. And then you go out for soul winning. Very important. Very important. Because a praying church will remain a growing church. Where prayer stops, that's where growth will be stalled. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, he said, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. So the first and one of the best gifts you can give to your church and your pastor is to pray for your church and pray for your pastor. So here. You pray for salvation and establishment of souls. That's the kind of prayer you pray. You pray for salvation and establishment of souls. You pray for advancement of the church of Jesus. You pray for the word of God to prevail. You pray for fresh oil for the pastor. Let Matthew 6 I think, become your life style. You go all out for soul winning as a life style. Not only five nights of glory. So winning becomes part of your life. You know what the Bible says in John chapter 4, 34 to 36. John 4, 34 to 36. Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, then come and harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to what? For he that reap received what? And gathered fruit of life, it's another body he that sweat, and he that reap may rejoice together. So don't say I will do it tomorrow. Do it now. Hmm? Go after everyone ordained for eternal life. May the Lord bless you as you obey. He said, go ye to the world and preach what? Gospel to every creature. For every soul won, heaven celebrates. Luke 15 verse 7. Every time a soul is won, heaven does what? Celebrates. Luke 15 verse 7. I sound to you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. The calling of soul winning is a vital calling to all. Do you know it is high level of irresponsibility for you to be encouraged to go for soul winning? I come in. If people have to encourage you, it just shows you are highly what? Irresponsible. They should encourage you. It should be a part of your life. It's not something they say if you don't go for soul winning, you will not officiate. Then you go. No, no. It should be part of your Christian they don't encourage you to go to work. You go to work because they will pay you. When you know the benefits of service, they won't encourage you. You do it as a lifestyle. So here. Mm. You can pray all the prayers. If you are not serving God, you will live in divine health. I can tell you the truth I know. You will never live in divine health. And divine health cannot be bought with money. I hope you know that. You can't buy health with it. Can't buy health with money. 
to live in divine health, you must serve God. Say here. Then the third area to serve God. Number one area is physical worth. Second, spiritual service is categorized into two, praying for the church and winning souls. Then finally, number three, financial service. Financial worth, service. This is using your money to serve God. Any money you cannot use to serve God is an idol. Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. Turn with me to Matthew 6 24. One to go. You cannot serve God. God is saying you either use your money to serve God or you serve your money. No neutral ground. Everyone who you see difficult to use money to serve God, they are serving money. Who say, you see, you see, uh, I don't. Anybody who cannot use money to serve God, you are serving money. He said you cannot serve the two of them. There's only two. Either you're serving money or you're serving God with your money. So here. Have you had anything today? Take a decision, backward action to serve God all the days of your life. Pray this prayer after me. Wherever you are, say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you. As my personal Lord and Savior, I believe in my heart that you died and rose from there to save me. Now with my mouth, I declare you the Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. If this message blessed your life or you need someone to pray with you, feel free to call us on plus 234-811-470-9570 or plus 234-904-303-0711. We are here to listen and support you. Follow David Ibiomi online for daily prophecies and wisdom quotes for living. Via Instagram at David underscore Ibiomi. Twitter at David Ibiomi. Facebook at David Ibiomi. You can also listen and subscribe to the David Ibiomi podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, and much more. God bless you. Join us next time on Hour of Salvation with David Iyomi. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries.